Hey team, welcome to another edition of the Rugby League Lounge Weekly Show. And once again, look, I don't even think I call him a special guest anymore. He's basically just a co-host. He's just a part of part of the furniture. It's Joel from League of Inches. How you going, my mate? Uh, I'm hope I'm hoping I'm a bit of furniture that actually really needs to be used, and not one of those things that are sit in the corner and you just you forget about half the time. It just builds up with dust. So. I'm hoping people are enjoying the content that we are producing. Oh, mate. Now, we've been getting really good feedback, mate, and it's really cool to see. Obviously, not the biggest community, but we're growing and we love doing it. So, yeah, definitely not a chore. It's a, it's a nice hobby to have. Now, I really need you today because, look, I'm going to have to explain this to the listeners and the viewers. We've got a fun little concept today. Basically, it's going to be hypothetical, and I always love hypotheticals. But basically... Let's set the scene. Peter Valandis has decided, you know what? We're going to lock seven teams into the finals. All the teams that have won more games and lost, which is including Light Knights now, who have, uh, and who have now, basically, I think it looks pretty certain that they are going to be seventh um, or are going to be in the top eight at least. And they've won just as many games as they've lost. So those teams are locked in. Now, that top eight, that eight spot, I should say, is still up for grabs. What we're going to do, though, is I'm going to get Luke from Rugby League Lounge and Joel from the League of Inches. They are going to make the best possible team out of the remaining nine teams that currently have more losses than wins. Now, we've also got super healing powers. Everyone is healthy. We can also bring back players that may have left this season. So coming back, Roger Stewart versus Sheck. There's no rugby going on in New Zealand anyway. You're coming back. You're fully healthy too. So... We are going to basically do this on the fly. We are going to make a 17 to compete in the top eight um, and we'll be ready in two weeks to make a run to the grand final. How does that sound, Joel? Do you reckon we can do it? Oh, I don't think you could have asked for two better blokes to get this done, actually. Two fantastic league minds and uh, we're on the way to, to premiership glory. Uh, imagine this a team established in 2021, no games, reaches the finals, we're going to win it. We're going to show the Tigers out there how easy it is to make the finals and actually win a game. Yeah, exactly. And also I want to start off with saying, I just also want to make this video just to highlight how much talent we've got in the NRL. Like these guys, obviously, um, you know, on, there's obviously going to be one team from this that realistically makes the eight, but there's a lot of talent that is not going to play, play finals footy. And you're going to see that on display here. Now, we're going to start from 1 to 17. So, we're going to start with the fullback first. Now, there's some interesting options. The Bulldogs, there's no one in particular that floats out to me. Um, same with the Broncos, either, uh, even though Tessie New has been great. But, look, I've got I've got names down here. I think Dufty deserves consideration. Drink water at the fullback as well. Um, Holmes is there too. you got Brim, um, you got AJ Brimson, Will Kennedy, Charles Nickel Clockstad, who would really been hasn't really been his best this season. Obviously, he had an injury disrupted season too. You got Reese Walsh, obviously the one the kid. But for me, because of the powers we possess, I think this could be an obvious choice here. Do you think we lock in RTS as our fullback? No, no questions. Uh, inspiration. I'll go a step further and say I'm naming him captain as well. You know what, mate. I think that's your first big call of the video. We're doing it. I've got the C in there. The, the, the listeners won't be able to see this, but I've got the C there next to his name. RTS um, is our fullback and, most importantly, our captain. Oh, I think that's the best decision we've made so far. Now, oh, we'll geez. go to the... <laughs> hasn't been many decisions we made, but still a good one. Now, wingers. It's interesting here because, look... From the Bulldogs, Nick Kotrick, I think his position, best position there is at fullback. Jermaine Asako is also another guy that I believe is best at fullback, but you got Coates also in his team. I think he really is a good shout there. Um, David Nofaluma, winger of the year last year, Valentine Holmes. Sadly, a guy that came off with a broken jaw um, last week, Ronaldo Militalo. Uh, I've got Dallin is there as well. Dallin with Tizzi, um, so DWZ. DWZ Rapana, I think, needs to be brought up. He has been kind of from a down year last year, has really 
had a more an improved year for me. Um, I feel like there's probably actually a few names I've forgotten here, but is there anyone that sticks out as a no-brainer that we have to have in this team, Joe? We're going to name both wingers right now. Yeah, both wingers right now. There's one for me that has to be in here, but um, yep. is there anyone anyone that you would like to throw out first? I'm going to say Coates uh, is my must, and yep. I'm going to say Ronaldo Molotalo is the other winger. Okay, so those were two of my three that I would have in there. Now, the my must you haven't mentioned. So, oh god, we could have a long one of debate. But <clears throat> Valentine Holmes, the value that he can add at, at winger, do you think he probably earns a spot here? Especially when we look at maybe the shakiness Coates has had at Ocean level, <clears throat> and we know <clears throat> that Valentine Holmes is kind of excelled in this in this spot uh, at rep rep level, do we put him in there or is he not done enough of recent to, um, sorry, (coughs) to warrant a spot on our side? Look, it's your show. So I'm not going to sit here and try and take over it, but one of us needs to be the the guy that puts his foot down and becomes the Maguire of um, this side. And if we got cameras following us around this final series, there's going to be a lot of bleeping, I can tell you that much. Um, I think the problem with Val Holmes for this year is that he's played out of position. Now, I just don't think he's a fullback. And that's unfortunately the Cowboys have impacted how he is because they need a, a, someone of his quality at fullback. But his best footy is on the wing. Mm-hmm. We just haven't seen it enough this year. So I guess it's up to you with how much you want to to bend the rules or already bringing players back and making sure they are fully fit. Uh, do we name them out of position for what they have been playing this year as well? Yeah, that's an interesting point too. Um, just two young guys there at the back. But I, I think yeah, it's a good point. He hasn't really played much footy there. And I've really been impressed. But Coates has been in and out too. Yeah, he has, but I think he has because he signed with the Storm. So I think Walters is trying to future-proof the Broncos and, and sort of picked him uh, for reserves because he, he ended up signing to move on, which I don't think was pretty fair because the Broncos need to focus about now and not later. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I think with the right players around, and this will obviously be a pretty strong side, I think Coates... Um, we'll have the confidence to do what we know he can do. And that's um, have a good um, high jump, high leap for the footy. And he's quick. He's got some speed. So mm-hmm. we need people out there who can keep up with the Saabs of the world because we're going to be perverse and manly, no doubt, in the finals. Um, we need some speed to counter that. Yeah. No, I'm happy with that call. I think we're going to lock in Ronaldo Militalo, who, you know, uh, um, I don't want to sound disrespectful because I've obviously known how great a footballer he is, but watching against the Tigers is just probably the evidence I need to know that this guy is going to be a freakish talent that is going to be a huge problem in this league. Um, And I I was actually looking, actually, you know, this is going to be off topic, but he comes a free agent in 2023. He's someone that if I look at how the modern game has been played and the role of the winger, or oh, he, I think he could be one of the more high-paid wingers in this game. He is that valuable for me. So, and I think he's really showed that talent already. And I just love what he's about. He's got a lot of passion. He seems, yeah, he seems like he's got a good head on him, and obviously an awesome character too. From what we saw, he did giving those boots to the young fella with a broken jaw, tremendous. And I'm happy with Coates. The uh, the X factor there is there, and behind. A better pack, no offense to the or a better team, no offense to the Broncos. I think we'll get the best out of coats, especially with Art and Roger, two of us are shit there. So, yeah, that's our back three. So, Roger, two of us are shit, coats on the right wing, Ronaldo, Militaro on the left wing. Now, the centers, there's one standout, especially when he is fully fit. We've got to lock Tony Staggs in 100%. Yeah, 100%. Now, I'm now fun- I think there's another easy selection here as well. All right, you, you can go on. You can, yep, carry us. If we're going fully fit, I think there's no question Zach Lomax is the other centre. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we've got two absolute young guns who are going to be stars of the future. 
No doubt about it. They've both already been talked about as being origin players for the Blues when they are fully fit. I think, move, like, if we're looking at all those eight or nine teams that we can choose from, I don't think any of the other centres come close to those two on their day. Yeah. I'm going to put Lauren Metzler for question mark here. Now, one era, one four I've got here is also, and I, I want to get your thoughts on this. Do you worry about him being predominantly a right centre? Stag's been a right centre as well. Does that worry you enough? Or do you think, look, the centres, centres are centre. They can play whichever side. Does that worry you at all? Because to for me, I, I do consider it maybe a bit too much. I I don't. I just think we, we've seen what Latrell and Turbo did at, at origin level. Now, that's the level above. Um, if players these days in the modern age can't choose between, like they can't alternate what positions they, they play on the field, I don't think you can consider yourself first grade footballer, to be honest. It's, I think the game's moved. Uh, you need to be adaptable, especially with injuries these days. Someone can go down, you need to quickly alternate. Um, yeah, it, it obviously that they're better at their preferred um, side of the field, but I think you, you need to be able to adapt. And I'd rather uh, as, uh, not as confident Lomax or um, Stags on the left side then I don't even know if you probably wrote someone down there, throw me a name of who you think should be left center. Now. Nah, so for me, he's the most talented guy there. Now I will transition to the six. I'm still going to question mark because there's an interesting situation. We get us. Look out. Mm. So the I, think six, I know where you're going with this. Yeah, The six options I've got down here is Nick Arima. I think it's been fantastic. Um, I also think drink water has got a lot of promise too. He's shown some great glimpses. This consistency has been an issue too. Um, you know, I've got two guys here that I think is probably going to get to the point that I'm going to make is Doohy and Weiss. And just before we touch on them, is there anyone else we consider as six? Now for me also, just remember Sean Johnson, I'd probably put it as my halfback, but we can consider him as six as well. But is there anyone else that I'm missing? Um, for me, maybe Milford oh. from last weekend, but yeah. <laughs> that's enough. If, if we put Milford in this side, the backlash that it would come <laughs> from the social media is ridiculous. It would just be you guys' eyes are painted on. Um, so I'm not prepared to do that. Uh, Villanders wants us to put a strong team in here, and unfortunately, Milford, you need to do, do more than one game. Um, I've I've got to lock in Dewey for this because for mine, Whiten, and this is a future thing that we talk about once the season finishes, but I've got him down as the most disappointing player of the season. So um, sounds harsh to a few people I know, but for mine, he he's coming off a Dallium year. Now, whether people believed he should have got it or not, he ended up doing that, and that's the, the status that he held. This year, he's been nothing like it. He has just – and it's probably – no thanks to how the Raiders have been playing and what's happened, but I watch most games every week. So I've watched most of the Raiders games and he just half the games I forget he's even playing because he just doesn't get involved. He's not even his normal self. He, he used to run the ball so much and just be terror 10 out. He would get the ball and he'd score. He was just that good. And this year he just hasn't done any of that. And I feel like Dewey for mine has carried the Tigers team that they've been so disappointing this year, but, they wouldn't have won at the eight games that they've won so far if it wasn't for Adam Dewey. And uh, he, he, apart from Laurie, has just been phenomenal for, for the Tigers. Yeah. No, I... Look, I've been kind of working on something I haven't even told you about, but I'll be involved, hopefully ask you in the off-season, but I've been looking at kind of making a little top 50 players list. Oh, look, I, I don't expect everyone to go go away at home and make a top 50 player list. But if you make as many play, put as many players down that you would have a head of Jack Wyden and you can base it off this form, you can put a whole lot of factors in. It, it takes a while. I'm not going to spoil it because, you know, it it'd probably lead to a really hot take and um, it's probably something that I'm going to put push for the future. But this... Just want you to let you know that there's a lot of talent ahead of him. Um, and Doohy, for me, is was one name ahead of him. Well, I've been really impressed with Doohy. I understand it's only his first season, number six, but I've been really impressed. Like you, um, like we talked about on your video, and I, I recommend everyone check it out when it's out. 
um, where we talk about the Tigers, um, he's he's definitely got the most energy of the side. He is, if there's anything about their culture that sticks out in a positive light, it is Adam Dewey. So for me, he's my six. That's why I leave a question mark for Zach Lomax. So do we add a defensively sound guy? Or do, well, he had a question, few question marks last origin, but let's just go with that concept. As a Jack Wyden as our left centre for this side. Nah, he hasn't played there this year. I'm sticking with that. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with he's got a – we've got to pick these players in at least the position they play. I know it's a different side of the field, but at least Lomax plays um, centre. And Whiten hasn't done that this year. And uh, I guess he maybe he's done it uh, – I had no, he didn't even do it for, for one of the origins. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I just think from mine, one has been so disappointing. He doesn't even deserve to be thought about at the moment, as harshly as that sounds, um, for this side, because I don't think we'll win the comp with him there. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Maybe, you know, might be a bit more steady than the others, but when we're looking to win the comp, do we want him as a centre? And you probably made a really good point there, actually. Halfback. Thanks, mate. Halfback, <laughs> it's all good. Now, I've realised when I'm writing this down, I've only got one name here, and maybe that was me being a bit lazy, but it might have been just because I thought he was the guy. Remember, we've got to consider these guys are fully healthy. Sean Johnson. Now, am I missing anyone? Because also, talk about the fit with Dewey. I like it. Um, it takes a lot of pressure off Dewey's hands. Um, look, we've seen how Dewey's been with Luke Brooks, who's been, you know, one of the below par halfbacks of this competition and still being excellent as well. Um, yeah, is he anyone but Sean Johnson? Or have I just had a complete mind blank? Yeah, I think you've had a little bit of a blank. Um, I've been very critical of this player uh, for, for since he signed oh, with this club. Yeah. But I, I think he's actually had his best year to date, and that's Ben Hunt. Yeah. Um, I think he's been instrumental in at least keeping the Dragons somewhat in it. And, with obviously the barbecue fiasco, we, we hate talking about it. We, we still bring it up. He was one of the, the only players that weren't involved and actually was asked to go and said, no, he wants to spend time with his family and, and stay at home, um, thinking about his career. So it's a tough one between Johnson and Hunt. Uh, they both possess different qualities. Hunt's the more game-managing style halfback. Um, Johnson's the more off-the-cuff However, in the last couple of years, he has probably gotten better at that game management style. He has sort of trimmed back the, the way he used to play. Do we need more players who have natural ability? I'm not too sure. Do we need someone to steer the ship? Um, I, I'm i leaning more towards that side of it, that we do need a, a, a ship steerer. <laughs> we need a, we, we've already got a captain, but we need a, a captain who steers as well. So... Um, it's a, it's a toughie. If you're asking me to lock one in, I'm going to have to say Hunt. Well, I'm probably just going to add another option here. Look, do you know what? His name isn't completely off my board here, but I love Ben Hunt as a hooker. I just do. Um, and there's options here. You've got Josh Hodgson. You've got Reese Robson I've put down. Nick Areem is another one you'd shift there. Tom Starling is another one who I believe could actually be useful off the bench too. Um, Oh, I've already got my bench player. Yeah, I'm pretty much bench player. That's fine by me. I'm looking forward to finding out. But if I'm not forgetting anyone, those are the hooking options for me. And for me, actually, can I throw a curveball in? Yeah, throw a big one, mate. Oh, I think we, I think we look at a, a player who just needs some confidence, and we need to help him out. And we're going to pick Kyle Flanagan. Oh, I feel so sorry for the kid. Yeah, um, we're going to, we're going to pick and stick with this kid. <laughs> it can be nineteenth man, mate. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, you know, people probably realise my thoughts on Kyle Flanagan. I think he's been in one of the more difficult situations of the last two seasons. Um, yep. But look, I'm going to make an executive decision here. Unless you are really sold on a hooker, are you? Can we put Hunt there, or do you think I'm a huge Hodgson fan? But I'm actually, from what I saw at Hunt at Origin level, I am sold a, as Hunt as our hooker here. Unless there's anyone in particular I've missed. Technically, I'll let you get away with it because he did play hooker at origin. Um, the other hooker I would throw into the mix who has been 
I look at all the teams and every team has had at least a best player. For mine, I feel like the Cowboys' best player this year has been Robson. Yeah, and it was there for me. Yeah. Yeah. There's, is there a way to, to put him into the side? Um, I don't know because going off my 14, it's not going to be, be him. It's going to be someone else. But I feel like we're, he's the only real Cowboy that we could have in this side. And if we want to oh, try and include... Really? Uh... I, I don't think we can put in the, the the JT at the moment just because he's been mismanaged. I think if we can maybe get get him back into health, yes, we, we put him in. Um That's what we're here for. Yeah, true, true. Um jeez. Oh, Mate, be the executive. It's your your show. Lock in lock in who you want. I'll just put in the comments later who I would have chosen. It's all good. Yeah, hey, no, nah, we've done we've done a good joint role, and at the end of the day, someone's got to make some decisions. And you've you've made a few, and I've made a few. But I, I think I will, you know, Reese Robson was down here on my paper, but I do like what Ben Hunt brings to the side, and I, I I'm gonna say Johnson at seven and put Hunt at nine. I think that's still his best position, and I think we need to a bit of experience there. And even though Reese Robson, look, he's not a rookie of any sorts, but he's, you know, he is fresh, can definitely compared to Hunt and Johnson. So look for me, it's tough. It's tough. And I just want to talk about Hodgson. I'm a huge Hodgson supporter as well, but the game has probably trended um, opposite to his direction. And yeah, so I'm just going to lean with Hunt at this stage, which I can't believe I'm actually saying being a Hodgson fan um, a year ago. But anyway, now we brought up JT. I wonder if we can we can probably transition to the forwards here, um, especially the front row. Now, I I think at the end of the day, it's that's our job. We, we are going to not mismanage Jason Tamalolo. When push comes to shove, I think he is still... Look at these guys, I'd probably put ahead of him as the best big man at the moment because of form. But when they're peaking, he's, for me, the guy... Um, you've obviously got Payne Haas. I think we need Payne Haas starting as our front row. I think, you know, do I got a nod there? Yeah, 100%. Payne Haas is first. You can put Payne Haas in permanent marker. Yep. <laughs> he's, he's, he's the number 10 every day of the week. Yeah, so we can we can probably sort like who we want to start and who are the bench shortly. But basically, let's look at having four maybe guys that we'd bring, in, bring on as traditional front rowers. And I'm going to throw... We can throw JT as a 13 or a prop. It's up to you. Um, unless, but go him as a prop. Throw him as a prop. Now, I think I think when we've got four, if we say we've got four props, he I think he has to be in there. It's just whether we start yeah. him or whether we bench him. Uh, start him. Start him. So we're going to have Jason as our prop next to... Uh, Payne and Payne Hart. can start. Yeah, I Such like that. platform. Cool. Jesus, that's a massive, that's a front row and a half. Yeah. So now let's go through some of the teams. So let's go Bulldogs. Luke Thompson's a candidate here for our for our bench prop. Um, we've also got. I don't think there's anyone in the Broncos that I'd probably throw in that discussion unless I'm forgetting. I don't think there's anyone else from the Cowboys. I don't think there's anyone else from the Dragons. Anyone from the Dragons in that front row that you'd probably throw in? I don't believe so. No. Nah. Tigers. I want to throw to Stefano in there. Um, I won't try to pronounce his last name because I'll embarrass myself. Stefano Utakamano. Utakamano. Utakam. Yeah, I'll work on that. Let's um, just try that. So Stefano's there. Now, Warriors. Aiden for Noah Blake. Definitely. And I think, uh, honestly, we can probably, I think he's there, isn't he? Aiden for yeah, Blake. I, I think you can put him in. I actually yeah. forgot about him. Yeah. And we probably want one more. Um, so at the moment, we've got Thompson, we've got Stefano as potential suitors. Oh, Josh Papalihi as well. Um, I've been really disappointed with him this year. Yeah. I've, 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 I was waiting for you to get to the next side, and that was the Titans. And I'm going to throw in Mo Fodawaka, who I thought has been huge this year. I think he's had... Easily his best year, and not just at club level, but he's made that step up to rep level. And that game two where uh, the Blues just sort of took over, he was probably the only Queensland player for mine that could hold his head up. Uh, he actually played so well. I feel like he was one of the the better Queensland forwards. 
Yeah, well, I've already written them down in our team, actually, while you said that, because I think once, <laughs> look, and respect to Josh, you know, arguably at the end of last season, who was the best front row in the game, but I've got to go with Mo there, and that's more credit to him. And also, we've got him on the bench. He's actually quite suited to that bench role, yeah. I believe. Um, he was the best player for Queensland coming off the bench, probably throughout the whole series, and in particular game one. Um yeah, and like and they like yes, Queenslanders didn't step up, but that's still the biggest arena for you to be the standout in the team despite being on a losing side. That's huge. So yeah, we've got our front row there. We've got Haas and JT starting. We've got Anthony Blake there with Fosha Waker there. So we've got five spots. We've got the whole back row to do, and we've got two bench spots, which I'll probably have a back row and a utility now. And we got locked, don't we? We've got lock, so yeah, so lock here, back row, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but just to clarify, yeah, no, it's good. Um, we got lock. yeah, we've got five spots, yeah, five spots, yeah, five spots. Um, <laughs> so, so I lost my train of thought as my phone locked down to me, just bringing up the options here that I've written down. I've written down, written down Hudson Young, I've written down David Fafita. I've written down Chanel House to Vita, Elliot Whitehead. God, I must have been loving the Raiders this day. Um, <laughs> Eric Sims. I've written down Josh Curran. I've written down Luciano Leilua. Um, there's probably some Brinton Nakur is another name that's popping into my head. Talakai is another name as well. Is there anyone at the Broncos or the Bulldogs that needs to be in there? Probably no one in particular that's standing out. Um, for me, Joseph Tarpany, probably more as a lock as well. Is there anyone we probably can submit? Um, we can probably lock in David Fafita as one for one of these spots. Yeah, I'm going to give him a massive rev up though, because I don't, I haven't been too impressed with him the last couple of weeks when Titans have needed some wins to, to play finals footy. He seems like he doesn't want to want to play finals footy. That's the way he's been playing. So I think he's obviously. Uh, in the side, but yeah, he needs a, a bit of a rocket. Yeah, well, he's got he's got Doohy next to him, so he will definitely give him a rocket. That's for sure. Um, and we probably need another bench back rower in the, in this side. Um, yeah, and that, that's going to be tough when I look at it. Um, there's, there's <laughs> I, top, I think the other the other starting second rower, I would go Tarek Sims. Yeah, he's probably, especially when you look at what he did at Origin this year. Yeah. Um, and he'd probably be more left side and David would go on the other side. But hey. And he's one of those players that at those big games, he goes to that level. He 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 loves it. He strives in it. Um, so I would definitely be having him to start, which then makes probably selecting a, an edge back row on the bench a bit easier. Uh, I'd, I'd go... <sighs> I like Corey Josh Harawira Naira. Yeah, I like Josh Curran, but yeah, I yeah Josh Josh Curran. This is yeah, of- he's been really good this year. I, I would, I just like him as a workhorse. Though he's probably that player to start and and just play a full eighty. He's just one of those workers. But yeah, and then as again, like the only forward for the Tigers that can hold his head up this year is probably Leilua as well, and that's. He would suit a bench role as well. It's it's a hard one. Yeah. I don't know. We could probably come back. Again, you can lock this in. I'm just going to put a comment in down below after you've posted it. No, mate. Saying. The only reason I'm still in, it's just a really tough decision, I believe. It uh, is. It is a really tough. It's probably, well, it's definitely a toughest decision we've had to make. Let's, well, let's leave it. Let's leave it because Ooh. at the end of the day, we could maybe, maybe not pick someone at 13, that is up for debate here. Um, yeah, true. Up there too. So if we look at lock, um, the options off the top of my head, obviously we talked about JT being potential lock, but we shifted him to to the front row. So he's off the board. Bulldogs, I can't think of anyone in particular. Um, well, you could, you could argue Thompson did play a few at lock, so he might be selected there. Yeah, yeah, no, he was a name that kind of look a healthy Pat Carrigan. I don't think I'd, yeah, unless we do get a little bit slim here. Um, we've got the Cowboys that we just discussed with JT. Um, I like Ruben Pollard. Obvious. 
There's an obvious there's one. An, there's an obvious one. Is well, let's he, just let's take name, the band aid off. Is he Tohu Harris? That wasn't who I had. But let's oh. go. <laughs> okay, we're going that. Let's let's go that obvious one. I was going to say Tino. I thought he's been oh. a better buy, a better buy than Fafita this year, and hey, Tino he's been my front row. He's been sensational. Um, I think he's deserved the pay packet that Fafita um, has got because he just hasn't stopped. Even last week against the Storm, he was the one that was chasing people down and always in the picture. Someone scored a try; he was always there. He's, for mine, just been phenomenal. So I, I like that. So I think he is our 13. And are we happy with Tohu House as our 17? Yeah, he can come on and stabilise the ship if need be. If someone goes down injured or whatever, at least we've got a, uh, a stable Tohu Harris who can play prop, second row or lock. Can I make an executive decision actually with that? Should we play Dave Fafita off the bench? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Tohu Harris to, to 12 or something, you reckon? Yeah. Or 11. Yeah. 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 I, I, you know what? I'm not just saying it because I made the call, but I really like that call. Um, but I do think, in the, and we've seen it be beneficial for the um, Titans. We've seen it be used at Maroon. So, and obviously, yep. defense has been put in question. And there's no, when he comes, going to become, when he's coming on, he's going to be the freshest player on the field. And he's going to be the most athletically gifted player on the field. And I don't care who you've got the match up against us, uh, especially in the four pack. I like what, you know, that that could be a huge X factor for us. So, yeah. Now let's go. You you already kind of highlighted earlier. This is our last position. I'm really liking how this team has kind of actually shaped out. But we need one more spot. And it's an important spot for me, the utility role. Number 14, who was your man, or have we really selected him? Mate, if we go anyone other than Reese Walsh, we've got rocks in our head. He, he played that position at the start with the Warriors. That X factor off the bench with the, the side that this has, he is going to be off the chain. Yeah, well, he's in. Uh, just <laughs> anyone else that needed a debate? Because um, I was... You know, like I would have thrown, I would have thrown Reese for Robson just for the fact that I feel like he has been the better Cowboys player of the year consistently. I think he's been the only one to really show anything. So if we were trying to balance that a little bit and, and include everyone for, from the teams and stuff like that, I would have said nah. perhaps Robson. But we're here to win a premiership. Um, and and for mine, we've got X factors galore. And why aren't we just topping off with the the, the best talent? Um, under 20 that's in the comp at the moment, that's Reese Walsh. Yeah, no, for sure. Now, my thinking, because I when I first was thinking 14, there's a lot of options under that hooker role. Like like you said, Reese Robson, they could have even chucked Hunt back to 14, played Josh Hodson there. And Nick Arima was another option, Tom Starling. But I, I yeah, I like because I, I would actually want to keep Hunt, Hunt on there for 80 minutes. I think he can play 80 minutes, especially when we only need him for four games if we are to make the the grand final. Um, it'd be different if we maybe were playing a full season. Um, look, a guy that I haven't put up, um, and this is basically our team, but a guy that we haven't mentioned is Cam McInnes. I don't think he finds a role in this team, does he? Just thinking about guys that have missed time because of injury. No, nah, he's, he's not making the cut. No, nah, just thought I'd bring him up just because, but no, I'm happy with Reese Rolsh. I'm just thinking if there's any other outside back there that we'd maybe overlooked filling his role, but for me, he does seem like the clear standout. Um, yeah, no, nah, I like that. Cool. Um, just to start, just to go back to the wingers, just I'm just having a look. I'm very happy with our decisions, and I'm not going to bring up Valentine Holmes again because I'm, I'm happy with the call we made. Were you <laughs> overlooking David Nofaluma? At all or not? Oh, we, we, we are a little bit, but he, as unfortunately, he's just been a, a victim of of the Tigers this year and, and he just hasn't really shone. And for a super coach player like myself, who, who paid the big bucks at the start for him, <laughs> he, he's just failed me miserably and I was not happy. I'm holding a vendetta against him at the moment. So never doing that ever again. Um, go on the cheapy options, the outside backs every time. Um, 
Yeah, I just think the biggest question is, have you taken the question mark off Lomax yet? Oh, it's off. Yeah, no. Yeah, all right. We're locking in. Yeah, we're locking that in. So um, I forgot to confirm that. As soon as we got past it um, and went on to the halfback, I kind of thought, no, nah, I think it's a good call. Um, like question marks aside about they've got about um, the the transitioning side. Yeah, I think it makes to be cool. Now that I've actually, I almost stumbled across it then, and he might be an option. Goal kicker. Who's our goal kicker here? We've got Adam Doohy that does kick in. We've got Sean Johnson now. Uh, obviously, we're talking hypotheticals. We might not want to give Sean Johnson kicking roles because of potential injuries. Um, we've got Lomax here too. Is there anyone that we or we will wing it on? Stags the kicks goals as well when he's fit. Um, yeah. I, I'd, I'd go Lomax. Yeah. I think Lomax... Is, is the better kicker there. All right, now, I think we're done, mate. Oh, well, are we going to be the coaches or do we need to give a coach? I mean, well, we'll, we'll choose a, a coach out of the eight, out of the nine teams, but we've forgotten a position. that we're, We've forgotten the new rules where you do select an 18th man. Um, do, who are we chucking in as our 18th man if we have a few HIAs? Oh, it's almost tempted to put Jack White in there by default um, because maybe he is going to be a more versatile option, um, especially because I think we probably have enough forwards to cover injuries in the forwards. And if an injury happens the outside back, would there be enough no matter where we shuffle on the outside? But we've got Reese Walsh there too. Um, oh, it's tough. I, is there anyone that stands out for you? Because for me, um, it seems like maybe he just gets in there by default. I'm all about X Factor at the moment, and I love these young guys coming through. X Factor, and this is absolutely left field and for what I believe what an 18th man should be all about, I'm throwing Jaden Campbell. I think he is oh. just the, – the chances he's had, he's been phenomenal. Um I love watching him play. That's the only reason I want him to in our team because I think he's an absolute natural freak. So uh, I can I can see where you're coming from. I'd probably go either just to make you happy, Whiten, um, or Josh Papali'i has to get it, I guess. Um, what about AJ Brunson? Maybe, maybe a Leilua as well. AJ, AJ could do it. I feel like he has been a little bit disappointing though. Um Toby Sexton, he's been okay at the Titans. You really like your young, promising players at the moment, don't you? Oh, I'm just – I feel like that's what the new rules are all about, getting the, the guys who want to play a bit of footy. I feel uh, like we've got that in Reese Walsh, so I'm just wondering yeah. that. I, I just feel like we need – I just feel – you know, I'm not happy with Jack Warden, but I don't know. Jack Averillo – I was going to say, is there a dogs play we can throw in just to help, just to make them all happy? There's going to be outcry. I'm tempted to put Jake Everillo in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. It's no one from the Sharks. Just lock in your man. Lock in your man, Jack White, and just do it. I think, I think at the end of the day, I think... Actually, you know what? You know who we're missing? I'm actually going to make an executive decision. Yeah, I'm going to put Will Kennedy in. Yeah, okay. From the Sharks, because I think he's actually had a really good year. Well, Kennedy. Well, oh, I look, we've got a few fullbacks. Yeah, mate, there's modern days, just fullbacks galore. What about Scott Drinkwater? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> hey, do you know what? Sorry, what we're going to do, I think we're going we're gonna to leave the 18th, man. I'm going to make a call. Maybe uh-huh. we'll have a few few options maybe we let we could let the um public decide somehow yeah okay leave it uh, blank i think i'm not feeling confident with the call we've made and um look we've got a lot of time till finals footy so i'm just gonna lay off our 17 and uh, coach. yeah yeah so oh coach <sighs> i want mcguire just so i can be in the sheds when he's just blasting f-bombs galore yeah no, I, I think. I wonder if we go Anthony Hook. No, I was going to say Nathan Brown. Nathan Brown. Oh, Lord, I don't know. 
I just think with all the teams there that that we've talked about, Holbrook, or or Holbrook actually, yeah, I reckon Justin Holbrook. You also got Ricky Stewart. No, he's a bit too full on for mine. I like Justin Holbrook for me. I like Justin. He's done a lot for St Helens in the past. He's got teams to the big one and and won it. So he's he looks like he's a bit of fun as well. He's someone I would like to sit in the boardroom with on a Monday after we've won the first finals game and we can just have a chat and have a couple of drinks. It'd be fantastic. Now we've locked in Justin Holbrook. We might have not been able to lock in an 18th man, but we've locked in our coach. Hey, we'll finish up there. That was good fun, I must say. Hopefully, um, Joel thinks likewise. And and if it's not the case, then he just wasted a good half an hour plus on that. But hey, thanks, Joe, for being the um, my co squad selector with me. Um, always great having you on. And yeah, no, I appreciate you coming on, mate. It's awesome. Mate, that was the funnest boardroom I've ever been involved in. So thanks for that. And I think that just quickly goes to show why all these teams are pretty much out of contention and, and not in the finals this year. Because, yeah, when you put them all together, it's a really strong side, but there was only one or two per position that were standouts, really. There hasn't been... where If we were to make this team of the next lot, of the next seven, geez, it's going to be tough. It, there's so much debate to be happening there. This was a bit more straightforward. There was only a certain few that have stood out this year, and I think that's why all these clubs are where they are. Yeah, no, for sure. Now, just to, just before we head off, I'll lay down our team for the viewers and listeners. Um, I'll be putting a post up too. But just to finish, the good way to finish the video, we've got at fullback, Roger Tuvasa Sheik, we've got Xavier Coates, Katoni Staggs, Zach Lomax will be our goal kicker in the centre position, and we've got Ronaldo Militalo. We've also got in our house, we've got Adam Duhi. And Sean Johnson, we've got Payne Haas, Ben Hunt in the number nine role, Jason Tamalolo also in the front row. In the back row, we've got Dave Defeater. Oh, so we've got Tohu Harris and Tarek Sims. And at the back of the scrum will be Tino. Um, and also on the bench, we have got our utility, Reese Walsh. We have got Aiden Fanil Blake and Mo Fodawaka. And we have got Dave Fafida. And we have also got Justin Holbrook as our coach for our final team in the eight. Cheers for listening, guys. Cheers for um, watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys next week. Cheers, Legions.